Egypt. Fascinating and mysterious. I've always wanted to sail the Nile, the sacred river of the ancient pharaohs. But with my extravagant taste for luxury and the exotic, there was only one boat that would fulfill my dreams. The steamer that carried Hercule Poirot and all the characters of Agatha Christie's novels. So alas, an imaginary boat. Or at least that's what I thought until the day I discovered that the paddle wheeler of Death on the Nile really existed. Magnificent. The steamship Sudan is exactly as I had imagined it. Delightfully retro. So here I am on board for a five-day cruise from Luxor to Aswan. A cruise? Rather a voyage back in time. I may not be a crime novel queen, but I did carry out my own little investigation before boarding. And so I learned that the steamship Sudan was launched in 1921 by Thomas Cook, the man who invented cruises on the Nile, and that Agatha Christie was indeed a passenger on board in 1933. When it was rediscovered in the early 2000s, the glorious steamer was no more than an abandoned wreck. But the gods have smiled on the old steamship. After 50 years of inactivity, the engines and paddle wheels kicked into action once again, a true miracle. Faithfully restored, the Sudan returned to service running cruises on the Nile as in the Belle Epoque. Amir, the cruise director, enthusiastically tells us about his darling Jen. The Sudan is the only steamship still in operation today, and yet she was built in 1885. The engine room, the pistons, the technical parts are the originals. The only change is that fuel oil is used instead of coal. Yes, I know Amir does tend to exaggerate, but he's speaking from the heart. So does it really matter whether Sudan was built in 1885 or 1921? This machine built in England is a true work of art. I could spend hours watching the ballet of pistons, listening to the sibilant song of the steam. A few more days, and I'd be tempted to trade in my evening gowns for a pair of mechanics overalls. Diplomats, artists, businessmen. During the Belle Epoque, the Sudan received a host of celebrities. But the most prestigious of all the passengers were the kings of Egypt. Ah, how I would have loved to have been part of all that. The Egyptian royal family, King Fuad and his son, King Farouk, used to sail in this boat. A royal boat still sailing the Nile is unique. Also unique is the great care that we take with all our passengers. As the boat's guidebook mentions, Thomas Cook put his first steamboat into service on the Nile in the mid-19th century. The opening of the Suez Canal in 1869 was a decisive moment. Every winter, British high society craving oriental exoticism would flock to spend the season on the banks of the Nile. Just imagine, the women in their full-length gowns, escorted by officers of the Indian Army, stepping off the steamers and boarding horse-drawn carriages that would sweep them off to the fancy dress balls given every evening in the mansions of Luxor and Aswan.
My dream was to sail on the Sudan. Well, my dream has now come true. But I'm still curious to see if the boat truly lives up to Agatha Christie's description of its luxury and comfort. Up on the bridge, the large wheel has naturally been replaced by a small joystick. As for the look, the Rais, the commander, fortunately still wears a jellaba and turban. With its decks of old teak, its woven palm furniture, the sun deck is the ideal place to observe life along the banks of the Nile. I convince myself that nothing has really changed since 1933, when Agatha Christie took her cruise with her husband, Max Malawan, an archaeologist. The social protocol on board has remained very British, so tea time is a must. But I take advantage to get closer to the bar and give an admiring look at the waiter's smart uniforms topped off with brightly colored tabouche. I haven't even seen the cabins in other parts of the boat yet, but already I see that luxury on the Sudan means, above all, authenticity. The boat is nearly 100 years old, and Amir puts a lot of effort into recreating the atmosphere and ambience of the old-time cruises. On board, you have stairs like these. The wooden decks are also the originals. All the old elements have been conserved. Cotton is used, never plastic, never anything modern. There are no televisions in the cabins. And of course, no fridges, no minibars. What counts is the atmosphere. There are 18 cabins and five suites on board the Sudan. Each in its own way evokes the spirit of the belly puck. As Barbash, the chief cabin steward, takes me to discover these secret little worlds, he mentions that the interior decorator spent months rummaging through the little shops of Cairo to find the furnishings and accessories that would give a personality to each cabin. Each stateroom bears the name of a personality linked to Egyptian history. Champollion, Queen Victoria, Alexander the Great, Howard Carter, and last but not least, Hercule Poirot. The diminutive Belgian detective would surely have appreciated the very British style and comfort of this cabin. However, we should mention that back in the 1930s, at the time of death on the Nile, the Sudan carried many more passengers, so the cabins were about one-fourth their present size. Which is the case, for example, with the Ferdinand de Lesseps cabin. Ferdinand, you know, the fellow who dug the Suez Canal. light-colored wood flooring, finely worked brass beds, richly colored fabrics. La Belle Epoque, reinterpreted by the Sudan, possesses a certain charm. I have to confess that when I first took possession of my cabin, or rather my suite, I instinctively looked around for the TV remote. Amir is right. True luxury means being able to do without the superfluous in order to focus on the essential. After visiting nearly all the cabins, I would be hard-pressed to choose a favorite. And what if it turned out to be this last one? The one that Barbash is about to show me right now. This is suite number 20. 
the Um Kalsum suite. She was a famous singer. There's another suite called the Farouk suites. He was the king of Egypt and Sudan. Each cabin is named after a famous person. The steamship Sudan has carried many famous people. As you can see, the suite has a magnificent period bed. Everything in the suite is period. The telephone, the materials, the flooring. You can see that this chest of drawers was made by hand, not factory made. Everything around us is antique. All the beds on board are like this one, antiques, that can't be found anymore. This one is more than 120 years old. Each cabin has a style of its own. There are no two alike. And number 20 is one of the largest. We pursue our voyage at a fittingly relaxed pace. In the shade of the Sudan's wide passageways, I take in the view and I drift off into my daydreams. I am Queen Hatshepsut, traveling to the land of Punt. I am Cleopatra on my golden throne, perched on the stern of a boat manned by several dozen Nubian slaves. I am Agatha Christie, writing the final pages of Death on the Nile. I am, I am an incurable romantic. Amir, who immediately saw my fanciful turn of mind, has given me the suite in the very pro, the Agatha Christie suite. Oh, these Orientals, they certainly know the way to a woman's heart. Naturally, the queen of crime never traveled in this very suite, but I'm sure that she would have loved these gilt wooden beds and this lovely dresser with its feminine curves. I spend long hours observing this age-old landscape as it slips before my eyes. While I enjoy a glass of cool karkade tea, the hibiscus drink so popular with the Egyptians. While I'm busy doing nothing, the Sudan's crew is hard at work polishing the brass. The Sudan has been back sailing on the Nile for several years, but its silhouette from a bygone era never fails to arouse people's curiosity. The smell of polished wood, colorfully upholstered armchairs bathed in the rays of the setting sun. Here in the lounge, the atmosphere of the belly puck is at its strongest. Yeah, <laughs> بكل زائر يحب يجي مصر وخصوصا على مركب سودان يا 
We're in the lounge of the Royal Steamship Sudan. This is where we welcome the passengers with a glass of Kalkaday, a traditional drink. Passengers also come here to read and to attend the little lectures in which we talk about the history of the boat. We tell them about when Agatha Christie came aboard. Also when the film Death on the Nile, based on Agatha Christie's novel, was filmed on board. All that happens in the Royal Lounge. My feeling is that the passengers come here to get the atmosphere of those old days. As the days slip by, I become more and more accustomed to this oriental dolce vita and the unique charm of this boat that has sailed straight out of another age. At the close of the day, when the setting sun turns the waters of the Nile to molten gold, the Sudan is no longer a steamer, the living memory of the voyages of the Belle Epoque. It becomes once more the sacred vessel of the sun god, which since dawn of time has marked the rhythm of Egyptian spiritual life. The cruise is not over already, but I know that the Sudan will have a place of honor in my collection of luxury boat trips. Not only has it been the authentic, comfortable decor of my little romantic adventure in the wake of Agatha Christie, but it has, in a way, brought me a certain peace of mind. I, who am usually so agitated, I find myself in a contemplative mood before the wonders of ancient Egypt. This time, I am totally won over. No more Agatha Christie with her lace and parasols. I am Scheherazade, voyaging on the finest boat on the Nile. Ever since I embarked, Amir has been telling me over and over, on board, you are a princess. And even though I know full well that in a few days I'll be back in my little Parisian studio apartment, it still gives me a warm feeling. Why would you embark on this boat, which is fit for a king, to receive normal service? It makes no sense. You should embark on this regal boat to live like a prince or a princess, to receive a unique service, a royal service. We strive to satisfy the least desires of each visitor.
I take out my red Moleskine notepad and jot down a few notes, as I always do at the end of one of my trips. Okay. The crew was extremely friendly and helpful. The cabins were utterly nostalgic. Now, I have to turn my attention to the gastronomy. Even though fine dining was not the reason I chose the Sudan, every evening I was surprised by different delicacies of Egyptian cuisine. left Luxor four days ago, and now we're arriving at Aswan, our destination. Over 300 boats sail the Nile, but not one of them comes close to the charm, the elegance, and the poetry of the steamship Sudan.